Welcome to Comedic Legacy Today, brought to you by the Center for the Restoration of Ma'at. My name is Anika Daniels Osaze, also known as Unfurka Ma'at. And my name is Jabari Osaze, also known as Heru Jeden Ma'at Aten Ra. I am really excited for today's show. We have a special guest with us that will bring some cooking flair to you, some tasty treats, and also healthy, live vegan food. Today we have with us our master chef from the Comedic Legacy, Heru Paur Tehuti Se Pata. So welcome, and I'm glad you're here with us on the show. It's my joy. Folks, I have to say to you that one of the things that really excites us about being able to offer you this show is being able to work with people that we love, people that we know will um, bring you the kind of information that will be edifying and entertaining. And so when we thought of those sorts of people, pretty much the first name that came to mind was Baba Paor. Um, because he not only has the rare ability to give you the sort of wisdom that you need at the time you need it, but he's also able to inject the kind of humor that you also need. And so we're really pleased to be able to have him here today. It's my joy. <laughs> <laughs> truly, truly my joy. Now, last episode we talked about the importance of the comedic legacy in your daily lives. And part of the comedic legacy includes what you eat. In order to meditate, in order to have a divine presence, to be close to the divine, you have to have a light diet. And it's important to know what foods should be entering your temple, because your temple is the place where you are going to have to face all of your internal battles, place where you're going to have to come to grips with everything that you've put in, because what you put in is what you, come, what you get out. And we want to show you today how to make the best out of everything that you eat so that you can be the best person that you can possibly be. I think that um, the thing that is also really great about this, uh, sometimes when people hear the word vegan and they hear the word raw or live, they get nervous. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why they get nervous is because these are not phrases that we learned in school. When we were in the sort of the PS 147 cafeteria for lunch that my mother used to send me to, even though I was in Catholic school, by the way, um, they didn't say, you know, here's your helping of kale. Mm -hmm. They didn't say, you know, <laughs> how about we, we choose some nice ripe avocados for you. Mm -hmm. And so the, sometimes it can be a little uh, nerve wracking to, to try to change your diet. And so um, the, all of, pretty much all the things that we have here are things that you can access pretty easily. Right, Baba Power? Most definitely, most definitely. And before we get into what we have for you today, I'd like to welcome our studio audience and to say thank you for being here. We're gonna have you taste everything that's prepared today, so I hope you came hungry and you're ready to give your palate something that's probably the most delicious thing you've had in a long time and it's also very good for you. So um, I guess we should start off by talking about, we're gonna uh, thankfully get a chance to talk to you a little bit more about who you are while we prepare food as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if you might talk to us about what you have prepared for us today. What do you, what do you think we're gonna hook up? Well, we're gonna start with the foundation of food, which is a salad. Because how I, how I serve food at home and it, w when I had my restaurant, I serve food on top of a salad, right? Correct. Everything went on top <laughs> of the salad. I even tell people, make, make, put some soup on your salad. Use the soup as your salad dressing. So I, I'm going to first do a, a kale salad, and then I'm going to transfer and do a, um, a salad casserole. Because for so long a time, people will always complain that salads are too light. They go right through you. So I started adding everything to the, um, to the salad. So I'm going to be adding hummus to the salad. I'm going to be adding avocado to the salad. And I'm going to hook it up. Mm. He said he's going to hook it up. You I'm hear that? Really he's going to hook it up. hook it up. Um, if we look at the animals, um, we notice that they don't cook their food. <laughs> And when we start cooking food as human beings, it's when we start getting sicker, mm -hmm. you know? Um, because we didn't always cook food, because mm -hmm. we didn't always use fire for food. You, if you, the foods that are, that are cooked stays in the body longer than the foods that are alive. Mm -hmm. The foods that are alive move right through the body. Mm -hmm. And the foods that are cooked, cooked stays in the body longer and putrefies. Mm -hmm. So it's always be beneficial to eat most of the foods that we eat, mm -hmm. we eat them raw. However, being that we live in a world that we have been accustomed to eating cooked for so long, I always suggest if you cook your food, put it on top of a salad. Mm -hmm. You know, that way you have what you call traveling music. 
<laughs> because the the, 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 the the salad will bring everything out of you, mm -hmm. especially this kale. Look at the richness of it. Look at the color of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it becomes a broom inside of the colon. It sweeps the colon, mm -hmm. you know. Can we get a shot of the, of the kale and how it looks here? Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to put this here so you can take a look at it. <laughs> now, and you know, I, I want to ask you a question about kale. Because when I buy kale at, at my local store, mm -hmm. often I'll see other people buying kale as well. Yes. And in fact, one time someone said to me that um, they were going to put their kale on, go pick up their kids and come back for it. Right. And I actually didn't understand what she was referring to, but then I began to realize that she was going to cook this yes. for a really long time. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. How do you do this so that you don't, it might be really difficult to just take it right off your shelf in this form and then decide to um, eat it just like that. What have you done to it that makes it easily okay. assimilatable? We, you take the kale, you take it off the stem, the bone. I call it the bone, the stem. Let's see if we can get some bone here for you. You know? And then you take it off the stem and this here, don't throw it away put it aside, and you juice this later on, mm -hmm. all right? But you take the kale, and you break it up, and you want to cook it for a short period of time. I told you, so we're not using no fire. We're not. We're going to use the lemon juice to cook it. Mm -hmm. So you take a little lemon juice, and you pull the lemon juice over it, and then a little olive oil. Now, was there a particular type of olive oil that you'd want to use in this instance? Um, you can use um, virgin olive oil, or you can use extra virgin. I don't know what extra virgin is. I, somebody had, had to explain to me because I thought that it was either virgin or it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was extra or something like extra. I was like, but it, it means the first press, the first press. That's right. what the virgin is. So and after you take it, then you massage it. While you're massaging it, you're softening it, right? But you have to keep in mind that you're making food for other human beings. So usually when I do the kale at home, right, I'm into, I wish you bluebirds in the spring to give your heart a song to sing and then a kiss. But more than this, I wish you love. You know what I mean? So you can put that into the food because when you're dealing with food, you have to be in a wonderful spirit when you're dealing with food. Mm. You can't be getting angry when you're doing food. Mm. Like some, some men and women, when they're cooking for their loved ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to be very, very sweet. So after you, do the, the, after you prepare it like this, let it sit for more, and then you get your romaine lettuce, and you cut your romaine lettuce, This here, you saving for what? Juicing. For juicing. 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 I know some of you meat eaters out there are kind of fearful. And I was fearful during my initiation because I still ate meat. So some of you are probably thinking, you know, am I really going to enjoy this? Now, the juice is good. Some of the juices are easier to take than others. But it's what's good for you. You know, it's about what you're putting into your system. You want to yes. make sure that you're cleansing at all times to be the most divine self. And so can I ask, how much, uh, roughly how much kale do you think you put in there so far? Um, about a pound and a half of kale. Okay. But you could use it depends upon how many people you, you know, how many people you have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, you can also use the, the, the uh, mescaline mescaline lettuce, you can put that with the kale also. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can use all three. I use, um, I use, with the kale I usually use sometimes the green leaf, the, 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 the softer um, lettuce. Mm -hmm. Yes. I use that. We want to make sure that, um, are, you, are you able to get a good shot of this? I mean, I, I, I think that um, this certainly doesn't look like some of the, the shredded, worked over lettuce that I see in some of the fast food restaurants. And so I'm, I'm enjoying the work that he's doing here with this. That looks good. Isn't that, isn't that magnificent? That looks good. And isn't I'm noticing that it's very vibrant in color. Very vibrant in Is color. there something about the color that we should pay attention to when we're looking for food? Well, you know, um, um, the green foods are the highest of the foods. You know? Anywhere there's chlorophyll, 
What's another um, term for chlorophyll? Melody? Huh? <laughs> oxygen. Oh, okay. All right? And we can't do without oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. We can do without water for a period of time. We can do without food for a period of time. But without breath? There is nothing. It's all right. That's right. <laughs> it's all over. That's right. That's right. So now after, now after the kale is, after the salad is prepared, mm -hmm. Right? Then you want to now season it. You season, uh, you season the salad the same way you would season your meat and your chicken. First, I'll take a red onion, cut up that onion. <laughs> Did you get some of that in your eye over there? <laughs> Wonderful. Opens up the eye. And you take the kale, take the onion and just, woo! Now, I'm noticing something, uh, Baba Power. I'm mm -hmm. noticing that as you're putting these things in this bowl, yes. it actually seems to be shrinking. Why does it seem like it's shrinking? Because it's being absorbed. Mm. It's going back to its, you know, because it's, it's, it has liquid in it. Right. It has oil, mm -hmm. right? So it's, 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 it's being what you call maximized. So in other words, it's almost like you're cooking it, but not. You're not yes. cooking at all the nutrients. No. Mm -mm. The nutrients are in it. Wonderful. Wonderful. You know, most of the food that we eat, all we actually eat husk. Mm -hmm. We're not eating. Um, we're not eating food. We're eating food that has lost all of its energies. Mm -hmm. You know, so after you mix this up a little bit, then you season it. Can you I'll talk put a some spike on it. The importance of eating this kind of diet. Like, what what's the difference between a person who eats this kind of diet versus someone who consumes meat? Well, first of all. Um, First of all, um, all uh, like I said before, all the animals that we eat are vegetarians. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I heard it's closest to the source of energy, such as the sun. It has more energy in it mm -hmm. because it's live. It's not cooked. Mm -hmm. It's not dead. And if you want to rejuvenate life, you have to put life to rejuvenate life. You can't put death to rejuvenate death. Mm. It would generate life. You have to put live things in you right. in order to rejuvenate your life. This is basil. This was spike. Spike has about five or six different seasons in it. You can get that from the health food store. And you put a little spike in there. And then you put a little traveling music. Traveling music? <laughs> yeah, this is the cayenne pepper. <laughs> Right? It looks like it's Nigerian cayenne, too. Good. <laughs> Ooh. And then you take um, a little bit of the seaweed. Now, talk to us about seaweed, because I know that um, I had a conversation. I, Anika and I were having dinner with a really good friend. Mm -hmm. And um, she saw the, the seaweed there, and she said, <laughs> I thought you were vegetarian. Why are you making sushi? And I said, well, I am a vegetarian. I'm putting in the salad. And she said, seaweed in your salad? That's Come crazy. On. That's crazy. <laughs> That's so, literally what she said. Now, and I'll tell you honestly, <laughs> the only person that ever taught me to put seaweed in my salad is the person that's standing before you today. Mm -hmm. And when I first saw it, I thought it was a little crazy, too. But so what, what does that do? Why, why is the seaweed important? Well, you know, the seaweed has everything that's in the sea in it. Mm -hmm. You know, all the minerals and nutrients that's, mm -hmm. that's in the sea, mm -hmm. the iron, everything. Mm -hmm. It's in the seaweed, mm -hmm. you know. I've also heard. We're that gonna, matter of fact, we're gonna do some sushi today too. Ooh! <laughs> but we're not gonna use fish. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we're gonna do sushi. But my understanding is also well, two things about the, su the sushi, um, uh, the nori sushi um, sheets. Really. Um, first off, I notice that when people do uh, d dishes that are supposed to simulate fish, they often use. Sushi because it gives it sort of the flavor of the sea to some yes. degree as well. Yes, yes, yes. That's one thing, and the other thing is um, matter of fact, that's where the that's where the fish get the sense from, mm. from the environment it's in, mm -hmm. right. which is a whole bunch of seaweed and a whole bunch of other things that they right. eat. Mm -hmm. Right, right, you right. know. And then in, in addition to that, I, I know that one of the reasons why um, we're even eating salad or or eating the sushi or anything is that we're all essentially trying to obtain energy from the sun. We should yes. talk about what this is as well. Right. Brad. Well, yeah, but Brad, in yeah. terms of energy from the sun, really yeah. quickly, um, uh, sometimes they say that ancient Kemetic people or ancient Egyptian people or other people around the planet 
indigenous peoples around the planet were sun worshipers. Mm -hmm. And so I think that to some degree, what we're talking about is the importance of the sun. And this is what this they, is sun. they were talking about, the importance yes. of the yeah. sun to all life on the planet. Right. And so the, the, these greens, what they do is they soak up sun. And I've yes. heard the sushi, it does nothing. This nori does nothing but sit on the top of the sun, on the top of the ocean, <laughs> and soak up sun all day long. The kind of thing that, um, actually, by the way, Maude has been trying to get me to do for a while. She's telling me that it's time to go on vacation, so we need to soak up some stuff. <laughs> but I've just said that, you know, it's so much cheaper to get her some sushi nori seaweed. Yeah. And so, um, He feels safe saying that while you guys are here. Well, I have to say that. <laughs> now, 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 this is a com complete salad. But we want to emphasize, we want to take it into a next level. So we want to take it into what you call the casserole level. Mm. So but before we get into that, it's yes. important to mention what the liquid amino acids are good for. So we have an ingredient called Bragg's. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it, but it's a substitute to salt. Salt causes all kinds of issues such as high blood pressure. You know, so we're trying to find a healthy alternative. And it's also said that vegetarians lack some of the nutrients that are necessary. So in order to replenish some of those things that you can't get, that we can't get from meat, Mm -hmm. then what we would use is something like Bragg's am amino acids, which you can actually, it's an enzyme that helps break down food. It, ha it has lots of, um, mm -hmm. it, it, the amino acids are actually the building blocks for protein as well. Yes. Exactly. And exactly. so essentially what we're doing is we're getting some of the things that we might not be getting other places mm -hmm. in things that taste like the things that we should be taking out. Yeah. Now I know that might sound a little strange <laughs> for some folks, but in actuality, dousing this with a bunch of, of table salt would actually not be the thing to do. Yeah. And so you still get your it's salt not, Yeah, it's not a healthier choice. Right. Mm -hmm. We always want to make sure we choose a healthier choice for ourselves. Mm -hmm. we, we should always want the best for ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we don't want the best for ourselves, then we need to be examined. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were talking about your salad casserole. Yeah, so I, oh, this is finished already. Mm -hmm. um, what we can do is let, um, we can taste this, but keep your plates. Don't throw your plates away. Because I'm going to take, put this over there. Okay. I'm going to take this here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make this salad casserole, so we can have a, 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 a you know choice. So I'll just take a portion of this out and put this in here, and we're going to sample the salad casserole. The salad casserole. The first thing you do with the salad casserole is you get a nice ripe avocado. It won't right. Yeah. You don't avocado. know how hard it was to find ripe, ripe avocado in Manhattan yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't easy. You can take the avocado seed and you can put it in some water and grow yourself a nice house plant. Oh, good. To bring in some more oxygen. You could do the same thing with the pineapple too. When you cut the pineapple ahead of the pineapple, mm -hmm. you take that and you grow. A, I got a pineapple plant. I really? If, yeah. It's huge. It's reach out to the camera. Wow. <laughs> okay, so essentially you just scooped it out. I want to make sure that we put yeah. it up so the camera folks can get a, a good image of it as well. So you're just scooping it right in. Just scooping it right in. Wonderful. This is sesame oil here. You can get this sesame oil, the hot one. This is the hot one. Is that the hot one? Yes. Yeah. Isn't it? Uh, pure sesame, okay. And you put a little bit of this, and this gives it more flavor too, yeah? Pass me the um. Now my understanding is that sesame oil is very, um, very, it's a rich. very strong flavor. Yeah, very strong flavor. Right. Someone in the audience said expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I think that might. But if you buy it, if you go to Chinatown, like if you go to the, how much you pay, how much was this? In, 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 the, in the store, mm -hmm. in the health food store, uh, um, ten sheets will cost you about five ninety nine six dollars, mm -hmm. right? In Chinatown, it costs you three dollars, but you can get the fifty sheets for six dollars in Chinatown. Wow, really? So that's yeah, that's where you want to go. That's where I thought you was going. Wow, wonderful, right? And this is hummus. Hummus. Now tell us what hummus is. Yes. Peas. <laughs> Black eyed peas. Chickpeas. 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 Right. Yes. And so essentially, they've they've taken it and then and they've 
blended it. They've mashed it together. They mashed it together, and, then the, and they add seasons to it. Right, sesame tahini. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I believe uh, lemon juice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some salt, those sorts of things. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can do that with actually probably any beans if you you know. Right. Because it's always wow. good. Beans is another substitute for for um for proteins. You know. Mm hmm There's high in proteins. Mm hmm So we want to. Just mix that up real good. Wow. And turn, and then if you have some some black olives, you can throw some black olives in there. You can throw some um so we do have black olives. Black olives. <laughs> Are they the ones with the seeds? No, no, seeds no they're pitted. Okay. They're pitted. Um, um, wait, wait. Sure. And you can put mushrooms in there, black mushrooms and and just have fun. When you're doing food for yourself, you want to have big, big fun. <laughs> now, um, I noticed that these particular olives that we're using are organic. What do you, what, what do your take, what's your take on organic foods versus other foods? Mm -hmm. Well, it's always best to have that which is best, mm -hmm. which we know organic is, is best for you. But as I said before, sometimes organic is a label. Mm. Because we live in a, we live in a world where they always duping the consumer. Mm -hmm. They'll come back about five years later and say, listen, remember that stuff you was eating? That was bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> remember the car that you bought? Hmm. We have to call it back. <laughs> so, you know, you have to pray with your food. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, prayer will help to organic also, make it right. organic. Right. Because sometimes, and some of us, especially when we're making changes in our lives from a certain type of, of lifestyle, it's very difficult for us to... Um, to make that change over, you know? So we want to do it as gradually as we possibly can. So that's why we always suggest you use tofu and other um, soy products in order to get that, you know, in order to, 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 to have that connection to that which you're trying to leave alone. Can we get a, a look at, I know you're still working on it, but can we get a look at how it's looking now? And look at the difference between most of it was this salad here. Yeah. Right. And so he's taken it from here and added a few items. Um, of course, you'll, you'll be able to see those items in a few minutes. Because, moments. see, this way, the salad becomes, it has more body to it. Mm -hmm. You know? So as, it's finished right now. So what we want to do is we want to, um, sister or brother and sister, take this. Yes. You want them to taste it, is what no, you're no. saying? Take so this, take it from right? the table. This okay. is what you do. Grab a plate and give it to everyone. And then you do this. Look. Don't give them the whole thing. Give them a spoon. <laughs> All right? Just give them a spoon. Okay, so we're actually sharing some of this stuff here today. Yes, we're supposed to share. As soon as we, ser as soon as we make it, we want you to taste it. Okay, and we have the forks here. And we have the forks here. Wonderful. So we can, we, we want people to participate. Now, as you're doing that, I'm going to ask. Um, if there's anyone that feels entrepreneurial today <laughs> and would like to come up and, and taste some of it and, and tell us what you think. Why don't come you come on, on up? Come on up. Come on up. Let's give her a hand. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. Now, you're not Mike, so I'm going to have you step as close as you can to me so you can get caught on my mic. No problem. <laughs> um, and can we, can we um, see if we can give her a plate and see if since she yes. is brave enough and see. Now, tell us your name, sister. Um, Wajiko Karansama. Okay, this is Wajiko Karansama. Beautiful name. <laughs> Wonderful well, name. Book too. And we're going to... book? Don't you have a book? Yes, I do. Oh, wow. <laughs> I am an author. Oh, yeah, she's an author. Wonderful. A great author. Children's book, right? Yes. Yes. My second book will be coming out next month. Wonderful. We, great. We might see her a little bit later on. <laughs> In another there. episode. Okay, let's see what you think. Mmm, delicious. Delicious! Mm. Were you paid Wonderful. to say that? Mm -mm. No, she wasn't paid to say that. <laughs> she ate my food before. She That's right. Was. I can't wait to get some more. <laughs> <laughs> they have it over there, so you can actually go back, and we'll make sure that we give you some. She's yeah, looking for salad. Yeah, 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 come, come, come. She's coming yeah. to get some salad. Sure, sure, sure. Look at this. Because she was um, brave enough to come up, she's getting some salad, too. Wonderful. Great. Salad and salad casserole to go. Okay. <laughs> so now what else are we working on what, here? What about the host? Well, we'll get something. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was about to say, I feel slighted. Um, <laughs> brother, how, how are we doing over there, my brother? Oh, good. I mean, is it good? Mm -hmm. Okay. See, we have to watch you eat. <laughs> yeah. 
And so can yeah. we um, see, what, what, what are we working on next? What do you think? You looking to see how the bulgur is doing? Yeah, we're going to, we, we, want, to, we want to do a loaf for you. Now this is my favorite part. No, this is not, this is the bulgur though. See, no, we ain't doing that. No, not the bulgur yet. You want to see how it is? Hmm? Now, folks, you, you, one of the things that we're trying to oh, do wonderful. here. Oh, wonderful. It, 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 it works. Bring, bring it here. Bring it here. Great. Okay. One of the things that we're doing, we're filming in the studios of Manhattan Neighborhood Network here in Manhattan. Um, and one of the restrictions that we have is that we can't use open flame and, and things that would actually heat foods up. So yeah. we were a little concerned about how we were going to do the bulgur wheat. Can you talk to us what, about what you've done to this so far and how yes. it got to this? Right. And we'll also show the audience right. what it this, looks like. This is... Give me the one that's oh, okay. This is the one that's open, right? Right. This is the bu the bulgur wheat, which is a grain, mm -hmm. right? And all you do is you take it and you pull it. So let's see if we can get a shot of this. If you if you have, let me see that bulgur. Okay. And so that's the bulgur wheat there. You put this much bulgur, and you put about that much water over it, about half. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now show us what you're, show us that with the bulgur again, uh, Baba mm -hmm. Power. Mm -hmm. huh? Show us what you were doing with the bulgur again. I took it and put it in the in, in the in the water, in the hot water. I want to put it in here so we can see it. Okay. Now, how much how much water do you think you put? Um, how much bulgur? How much water? An estimation, of course. Um, Have you ever noticed that master chefs never actually measure things? <laughs> now, I'm the guy in the kitchen that has to have three or four cups, and they're all spinning well, this around. Is what, this is what this is what you call spirit spirit preparation. <laughs> mm. Because you know when we saw our mother and you know, and whoever was in the kitchen, our auntie or our grandma, when they was preparing food, they didn't do a spoon of this and a half a spoon of that and none of that. All they did was a smidgen of this and that's a right. smidgen, smidgen of, of that. that. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Sounds that's like right. grandma. You know, so you take your, you take your bulgur and you put your bulgur in there. Wonderful. And then you, you get busy seasoning the bulgur. Okay, now let's here. let's show you. Oh, they <laughs> oh, left, left us, us some. some. Thank now, see, you. That's the kind <laughs> of studio audience you want to work with. They actually <laughs> left us some food. I think they were saying we looked hungry up here, actually. <laughs> okay, so maybe we can get a good look at at the bulgur here. Yeah, you see, it looks like it's all mm -hmm. uh, it's cooked, right? And so that's the bulgur there. That's the bulgur. After, after the water, absor we put the water back into it. Yeah. Now, so we put water that was not quite boiling, but kind of yeah. boiling. Right, kind of and boiling. we left it, and it sat for about a half hour. Right. Okay. And, and it, took, it took over the water. And there's no water left. You didn't, have to, you didn't have to strain it. You didn't have to... No. Right? No, it, it, it snatched up the water. And did you tell us how much water you did to this bulgur? Because you know we're going to get emails A smidgen. About this. <laughs> a smidgen. No, well, see, no. okay. Say, <laughs> say half and half. Okay. Right? So half water, half bulgur. Yeah. Okay, you good. know, right, good. right, a little bit over the bulgur, right, so it can have room to swell. Okay, good. All right, good, good. Now, and and for those of us that might actually make a few errors with this, and then come back and notice that it's still a little hard, could you add more water to it? Would it? No. So how does that work? Well, you can add some water. It might be a little soggy, mm -hmm. you know. So you have to. Um, do trials and errors. Right, you know? right, 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 right. So when you after 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 it comes after it takes up the water, then you want to now season it. Okay. All right. So the first thing you do is brags. Little brags aminos. Little brags aminos. Where's the spike? spike. And that's going to give you the the flavor of salt, correct? Yes. And plus, there's sea salt also inside of the bulgur. Oh, the sea salt in the bulgur. I didn't realize that. Yeah, there's a little okay. sea salt in here. But you can also get the, uh, I mean, not in the bulgur, in the spike. In the spike, right, yeah. okay. And you can also get the spike without the sea salt. That's right, you in know? case you're, you're trying to really cut down on the amount of sodium that you're intaking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And also, I would recommend that you get a book um, called You Ain't Sick, You're Thirsty <laughs> mm. by Dr. Batman Dillage. We'll definitely make sure that the, the um, yeah, folks that's, at home that's are able important. to see that. that one. And so, how much, how much roughly, how much spike did you put on there? Two, two tastes, or what would you do? Yeah, two tastes. Was it maybe two a taste. two tablespoons? I use, I like? use, I usually use my taste, you know, which usually um, complements your taste. <laughs> <laughs> how was that taste? 
The studio oh. audience is really quiet right now. I know. They are because chowing they're down. <laughs> okay, so we're working on the bulgur now. Now, I noticed this bulgur doesn't look like your white rice that you get from your Chinese food restaurant. Um, it, it, it has a lot more color. I've seen, I'm seeing that it's, it's yeah, darker it's and has more brown. It, it's before it has been bleached. Ah, so you're saying that actually white rice has been bleached. Yes, they're taking, they're taking the stuff out of it and they sell that to you. But mm -hmm. there's sometimes now that they're, they're able to produce white rice. Without bleaching it? Yes. Okay. 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 And but so... They, I don't know if they're able to do the wheat yet because the wheat, I know the wheat has to um, be bleached. Hmm. Now let me ask this. What is it that they're... Why would you want to take this instead of the stuff that's been bleached? Because of our orientation. Okay. Our orientation tells us that... Um, He's adding olive oil, by the way. This is olive oil. That the quick foods are best for us. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? And they're not. The fast, food fast, not. fast foods will get you into a early grave. Mm. All the foods that we eat causes the disease that we get. Mm -hmm. We are what we eat. <laughs> mm. Well, can you talk a little bit about starchy <laughs> foods? Because as a vegetarian, some people who are going through transition, who are trying to become vegetarians, end up being starchitarians instead. Mm. You know, you're running out there getting potatoes and rice yeah, and well, pasta. You know. so and also saying, the combination of foods. I so know you, people eating rice and peas and rice and beans because it's a cultural thing a really for us. Good. You know, is it okay to do that? Well, we know that we need carbohydrates, right? But it's always good when you have your starch to make sure that you have the proper combination. So you have starch with salad, with vegetables. Mm -hmm. You don't have starch with starch or starch with meat. You have starch with vegetables. Mm -hmm. That's best for you. But, you know, we have been brought up, this is the sesame oil, we are brought up in a certain way that... Um, it's very difficult for us to change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I was brought up in the Caribbean, and um, we ate very, very little meat. We ate meat like on Sundays, you know, but we ate a lot of fish. Matter of fact, when I, when I give up fish, the fish laughed at me. <laughs> when I told the fish, I got to give you up, I was doing it for health reasons. Mm -hmm. The fish says, boy, I raised you. <laughs> <laughs> And so this is this is a little bit of the fire in there. You yeah, put yeah, the cayenne. yeah, the cayenne. The Nigerian is, cayenne. The cayenne is for circulation. Seaweed. Seaweed. Now he's putting some seaweed in there. He's hooking. This is how I. Fish. This is how I hook up mines. <laughs> you know, I put seaweed also in. And so let, we're going to lift this while he's getting the seaweed out, so you can see a little bit of what this looks like. So our camera, our studio camera can get a good look at that. Now, from my close-up eye, I can see the cayenne in there. So <laughs> it's going to be tasty. Trust me. Then I take the seaweed <laughs> and put it in there. Now he's putting his seaweed in. I put in. seaweed in, in couscous, too. Now, this seaweed, it comes in dry sheets. Yes, it looks like paper. It's Paul, I call it paper fish. Paper fish. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so when you put that in there, what happens? Does it stay dry? or No, it, it gets absorbed, you know. It gets observed in the, in the moisture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and become one with whatever is there. I use seaweed also when I do my okra soup. You know? Who likes okra soup in here? I know I do. I love me. <laughs> I'm so sorry I did not bring some okra to, to let you taste the raw okra. Well, you know, I'll, but I'll next tell you, time, this is next folks, class. I'll tell you, as we did our production meeting, when we went over and had a chance to sit with Baba Paor, I was sitting there and I must have looked hungry. <laughs> so he actually gave me some of his incredible okra soup. And um, I have been nursing it because he gave me <laughs> something to go home with. So I've been nursing it so slowly because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to taste it and say, hmm, what did Baba Paor put, put into in this that thing? Because I'm, I'm really trying to figure out how I, I can do see, it myself. See, when I, when I prepare food, as soon as I almost prepare the food, right, I leap into the food. Mm. Mm. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's right. He put you know, his whole body so in it. Put his foot in it. He put his whole body in it is what he's really and saying. And soul. That's what he's saying. Oh, great. Can you pass me a plate? 
I don't know why she's taking a plate because we were at home. She would have just eaten this without a plate. Well, but, normally I but we are sharing the spoon right. with the, the audience. So. Well, you're not going to eat off the spoon. You can. can you pass me a fork? I, I think I'm going to eat some of that off of your plate there. Okay. One of the benefits of, of That's marriage. That's if I let you. Of marriage, <laughs> yes. Mm. This is good. Now, folks. Mm -mm. Uh, I don't know if you heard that I said I was going to take some off her plate, oh. but she proceeded <laughs> to virtually eat all of the bulgur off the plate. Okay. Um, Can I get a, a taste, please, Mont? Okay. Is, is oh, the brothers oh, are looking out. Salty. No, it's good. It's good. The brothers are looking out for you. They said, feed your man. <laughs> mm, brother? No, um, let, let's do a sister serve this time. You, sister. Me? Yes, precious darling. <laughs> You're the one who wrote the book. And John, you want to come up? The great book. <laughs> to eat. <laughs> we'll have John try some of it as well. Yes, definitely. Can I, can yes. Assistant, He's going to be the assistant here. John is going to be yeah, the John assistant. Yeah, John's going to be the assistant. He's going to taste some too. Give me, uh, okay, now we need the, um, okay. we need the, what's the name? The blender? Top. The blender. Okay. The blender, okay. It's not a blender, it's called a food oh, processor. Food processor. Food processor. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one is a mixture. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay, okay. so we're getting, food processor. we're getting the food processor here. Is, is salad supposed to go in this? Did you say you put the yeah, you can put salad, salad. <laughs> These people are asking for food. Come on around here. So well, we, we told them to come camera. hungry, so. Bring the, uh, so we can get you on camera. The next and please, make sure. One now, one now. One okay. why don't you, can you take some since your, your hands are. Yeah. Sing to it first. <laughs> I sung to it when I made it. <laughs> <laughs> He's asking for him but to listen, sing to his food. You can sing to it. It'll be the same thing. Wow. Okay, so now, now what are we, what are we getting into now? Mm -hmm. We're getting ready to do um, um, a loaf. Nut mm. loaf. We're gonna do a nut loaf. This is one of my favorites. This is what I ate during most of my initiation. <laughs> now I'll tell you, folks, she was actually supposed to be fasting, so she really wasn't supposed to be eating that during her initiation. True. Mm. But we, you know, we do, we do um, allow, being that it's live. Right, we do allow a nut loaf. A little, a little. He gave me permission. <laughs> she got permission here, folks. Is that too much to do? No. He knows what he's doing. He's a master chef. Press the. Um, okay. And so, what are you going to put this on, essentially? Do you want to put it on? Is it plug on? Yeah, it's on. It's on, Anika. Okay. So what we're going to put this on chop, correct? Yeah. There you go. Okay. okay. Now, hopefully now they folks, can you us. can tell <laughs> that we are doing this real time, so that you yeah. really get a sense of how these things work. Yeah. And so essentially, what he's done is he's taken. Why don't you pass me those cashews there, my aunt? Okay. And let's see if you can um, take a look at. Now, I hope the camera um, can pick up these cashews. Can you see the, the 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 difference between the whole cashew here? That's the whole cashew. Mm -hmm. And then. We're essentially working with something of this consistency. I'm going to have Baba Power take it out so you can take a look and see. Yeah, you take what it's the, um, like. after you put in food process, you turn it into a powder. Just put it. And so this is. I want them to see the consistency of the powder. Are you? We can take it out. And these are yeah. raw cashews. Okay, it's not right, the right. typical cashews that you would probably get out of the can. And they're they're not roasted. They're no. And so he blended it until it came uh, into pretty much into a powder. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, a nut loaf is essentially a vegetarian meatloaf. So yes. For those of us, who, again, who are going through transition, and you still want that texture, and you still want to have something heavy, this is a way of, of doing it so that you're still eating healthier. And so essentially, also, what we're doing here is we've processed this down so that it's easier to assimilate, and he's going to... I'm sure he's going to hook it up. Now, before you do anything else to it, yeah, I want the audience to be able to, uh, the, the, the audience at home, to be able to see the consistency. Okay. It's a powder. So he's made a powder out of it. Mm -hmm. And that was about one pound yes. Yes. of cashews. And now he's taking one pound of almonds. Raw almonds. Raw these almonds. are raw almonds. Need, none of these have been toasted or roasted or anything uh, to it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to... Chop this up as well. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. 
Now, there we go. I don't I'm know if he's going to tell us what's in his scotch bonnet. Are, are we worthy? Yes, most definitely. Uh, okay. <laughs> scotch bonnet. You know, I like, reveal everything. And oh, I'll okay. tell you, a lot of times when you have master chefs come on, um, they come with their own little, uh, does that look good? Yeah. They come with their own um, seasonings. Mm -hmm. And so he came with these um, kind of unusual containers with things that he'd already prayed over and done some interesting things to. But he's going to share with you today on Comedic Legacy today what are, are, are in these particular containers as well. Yes. Okay, so we've processed those down. And make sure it's nice and... Um, that's right over there. The container. Just put it right over. Oh, right here. Green yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I. Um, and so now, what he's doing essentially is mixing the cashew and the almonds together. Mm -hmm. I need two cups of water. So I have some. Water. Two cups of water. Okay. Cold water. We're going to need two cups of cold water as well, and so um, we'll do that um, in a few moments as well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add the seasons to it right now. Mm -hmm. While I'm adding the seasons, then I can get the water. Okay, so which seasonings do you need? The same season. I'm de basically dealing today with the basically same season. Okay. However, sometimes I use sage and other um, oregano and stuff like that, but today I'm using basil okay. and the spike. Okay. So we want to do a, a loaf. So you put a little spike on it. So we're spiking it up. We're spiking it. We're spiking it. <laughs> you see that in there? He's spiking it up. It's spiked up. And what else are you going to put in there? I'm going to put some basil in there. Wonderful. While you're doing this, hopefully um, you can talk to us about some of the things that you're doing. Uh, because uh, the benefit of doing a show that, that um, airs in New York and, and also in other places, but the benefit is that you can reach out to some of the folks that you'll see on the show. Um, so I'm hoping, because we have uh, a, a limited period left, that you can talk to us a little bit about what you're doing while you're seasoning this up. Yeah, well, you know, um, like yesterday, yesterday was a very, very electrifying day in my life because two of my children went with me to the Russian baths. Hmm. And we sweated last year's stuff away. Hmm. And it was a magnificent, it's always wonderful when your children can join you in the work. Because, you know, you know, the preacher's son and daughter, right, are the worst behaved in the church. Because <laughs> <laughs> they haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And they, they think that they don't have to get it. Right, they don't think they have to get it. You know what I'm saying? Now, when Baba Power said that they sweated yesterday, he does something called the soul sweat. So not only is he dealing with the foods that you put in your body, he's also helping you sweat out some of the toxins and impurities in your body. So he goes to the bathhouse once a month with, once a month with a group a month, of people. Twice? Yeah, I, okay, I go in more. Pennsylvania and in, and in Brooklyn. Oh, wonderful. So we have our cold water here. And you take about how many people? 10? 10, 15, 20. I took, um, the most people have everything to the bad house was 103. Wow. wow. I took Ben Vereen and his whole cast when he was doing Fosse. Wow. <laughs> I took his whole cast of 103 people. Incredible. We had a one, and, and we sung and we... Matter of fact, before we leave here this evening, we're going to sing a song. <laughs> now, folks at home, you probably aren't going to get a chance to see the singing. But I will tell you, <laughs> just because oh, we don't might. have a lot of time left, um, I will tell you that it's going to be magnificent. This now, is, what are you adding there? Okay, I add, I add this, the, um, the spike. I add the basil. This here is scotch bonnet and fresh garlic. I put it in the food processor. Ooh, it smells good. Yeah, scotch, uh, I'll pass it on so you can get a sniff of it. He opened that, and uh, <laughs> I just caught a, a food high. I'm the, scotch, <laughs> the scotch ones are the sweet ones. Right. Not the hot ones. The sweet ones, mm -hmm. you know? So you take, well, I'll take a of this. Wow. Put a little bit of that on there. That smells really good. Mm. Well, that smells so good. So you put, I'd say, mm. that looks like about four or five tablespoons. Yeah, or a pot spoon. Right, a pot spoon, okay. You well. know? Yeah, a handful. Should we have them or, smell this? Oh, yeah, or a smidgen. Yeah, pass okay, it so still, you want to take this and have the audience take a whiff? Yeah, and this here is uh, is onion and red pepper. I wow. puree it. Wow. Onion and red You're pepper. Red bell pepper. Red bell pepper. Wow. And I puree. Did you use it already? No. Why don't you use it? So. 
You're getting the, the this is almost like those shows where you Ooh. and then actually I take see some the magician water. and they reveal all the secrets, right? I take some so this, water. This, this smells incredible. Would you like to smell it? Why don't you come on over and we'll give that to you. Wow. And you'll see it starts to thicken up and it has a different consistency now from the juices. And if sometimes when you do it, it may come a little soft. If it comes soft, then you have to bake it. Hmm. To make it you're saying, you're saying it, it has too much water is what you're saying. Yeah, if it has too much water in it, yeah, then you have to put it in. Take some of the water out. Yeah, you have to bake it. Or couldn't you just add some more nuts or stuff like that? You could do that, Yes, right? yes, yes. But mm -hmm. I prefer that you bake it. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. But don't put it in the oven. Put it in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> you put it in the refrigerator. <laughs> wow. And it hardens, you know. Um, the nuts is where we get our, mm -hmm. our fat from mm. because of the oil in the, you know. Now, some people, when they do this, they take it and put it in a pan, in a baked pan, and put it in the oven. I've known some people who have baked it. Wow. They have a pan full of oil. Mmm. Wow. That's because of all the, the fat that's coming out of it. Yeah. And, and I think that we're, um, for quite some time, we were in a situation you, where we believed that fat was bad for you. And now we're realizing that it has its place. I mean, obviously, um, when someone calls you fathead, you should actually say thank you because your brain <laughs> is actually made up of a whole lot of fat. And so anyone who doesn't have fat in their brain is probably not thinking too straight. <laughs> so I want to make sure you get a look at how that looks. Put a little bit more okay. uh, salt. A little more salt. So are you going to do that with Bragg's? Lava yes, power, with or? Bragg's. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to take our Bragg's again. Put a little Bragg in there. That's enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Put that together. Give me the open This? This? Mm -hmm. Okay, so essentially what he's doing. This is a loaf pan. Right, so he's going to make it all nice and purdy for you. And so what we're going to do is we're going to prepare this plate. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to see it. Wow. And this here, you can take some of it out, put in a uh, um, put in a, a in a small bowl, add a little bit more to it, and make it into a dip. Mm -hmm. And then when people come over, you pass it out the dip with some with some um, crackers, veggie crackers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some potato chips, or some uh, you know whatever mm -hmm. whatever whatever floats your boat. <laughs> Wonderful. That looks great. And so I want, I want the camera to be able to pick up yeah. what that looks like. Okay, so essentially what he's done is he's filled this to the point where it's actually going to take the shape of the dish itself. Mm -hmm. right. And are you going to dump it into this? Is that what you're no, going to no. dump it. You're going to leave it like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, so that's, that's our, our loaf. Mm -hmm. Now, we have very little time left. Is that, it looks like this is a really full meal that we've worked with already. Yes. Mm -hmm. So essentially what we've had, I'd like for you to talk about what it is really quickly so that um, the audience knows exactly what they've gotten. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the, your foundation first? Right, this is a patar salad, green salad, kale, romaine lettuce, red onions, um, spike, cayenne pepper, olive oil, and sesame oil. Now, you remember we talked and about the last And lemon time juice well. to soften the kale. Mm -hmm. And so that's the salad there. Okay. And then you made the salad, salad casserole. casserole the which, salad casserole. Interestingly, folks, you're not going to be able to see much of it because the studio <laughs> audience has <laughs> enjoyed it. As uh, a matter of fact, I saw, I saw someone in the, one of the rows chewing on the plate. <laughs> <laughs> Do not and eat so the plate. essentially... <laughs> <laughs> this is what this is what it looks like, mm -hmm. and so you could actually plate. use that. You could actually put this also in a loaf dish, I assume. Yes. Power power. But let me do uh, uh, let me do a, um, a sushi real quick. Uh, I have time for one sushi. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Very quickly, we'll do that. And being um, that we like, you know, we'll do a sushi real quick. And then we also made the bulgur, and you remember the bulgur. Mm -hmm. This is sort of um, for all of you who are like me that like your peas and rice. Trust me, this is healthier than your peas and rice. Yes. Don't tell my mom I said that. Um, but definitely you'll be able to. It also um, doesn't give you there. gas like peas and rice. <laughs> okay. And then finally we have the nut loaf. The nut loaf. And so your essentially what loaf. he's done, 
Why don't you show us what you tell us what you just did so that um, I'm getting ready to do um, 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 the sushi. Okay, and so you took out one of the sheets of nori seaweed. I take a, a sheet of nori. Okay. I take a small portion of the nut loaf. Put it on the seaweed. I want to make sure you're able to see this here. Okay. All right. Pass me a little bit. This? Yes. Take a little bit of this over here and put this here. Just put a little salad in it. Put a little salad in it. Okay, wait, before you roll, really quickly, let's take a look at so we can see what he's rolling. Do you see? Can you see that at home? Mm -hmm. I think you can get a good sense of what's going on. And so he's taken the nori, mm -hmm. and he's rolling it in the nori, and then putting some water on the edge. And the water on the edge is going to do what, Baba Power? Stick it. It's going to make it like glue, yes. sort of, so it sticks together. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to I'm starving. remove these. <laughs> He's removing the gloves. All bets are off. Because normally I don't, put, I don't use um, gloves. My hands are clean. And, but what I did was, when I'm doing the salad, and you're mashing it up, I got, you know, you want to, you know. So now this is the sushi. So he's cutting it into rolls, very similar to sushi. if you were... Um, at your local Betty Hanna. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but in actuality, this is live food, so um, it doesn't have all the things that other things might. And, and of yeah. course, you might say, well, isn't sushi raw? Yeah, and it is raw, but certainly it's not going to have all the nutrients that even this version has. The, 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 the difference between the, 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 the animals, the foods that we eat, like we were talking about food combinations, we talk about emotional connections to food, mm -hmm. right? The reason why we eat a lot of starch right, is because we want to feel fulfilled, and starch will fill you up. Mm -hmm. The reason why we go to the sweets is because we want some sweetness in our lives. Mm. <laughs> End up with diabetes, though. <laughs> and then we go to other foods like flesh because it produces anger, mm -hmm. you know, because the, 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 the animals that, that we eat went through great suffering and pain. Mm. I know you don't want to hear about the great suffering and pain, but they went through, matter of fact, the one that suffers more is the fish. Mm. Because the fish went through suffocation, which is one of the most horrible deaths that you can encounter because we're talking about gasping for the breath of life. Mm -hmm. Wow. And after this animal went through this treacherous experience of pain and suffering, we season the pain and suffering. <laughs> make a nice sauce for the pain and suffering. Mm. And eat the pain and suffering. We want to know why we're catching hell. Mm. <laughs> okay. Wow. So this is a wonderful so dish that we mm -hmm. a number of dishes here. Folks, we're going to um, actually enjoy, our student audience is going to enjoy this, obviously. Because okay. you at home are going to be turning off very soon, so you're not going to be able to get a chance to, to see all of what we're doing. But I want to, um, while we have Baba here, just um, get a commitment from him, because one of the things that he does also is he is an accomplished poet as well. Yes. And so hopefully you'll come back and... and and read some poetry with us. Oh, most definitely. And then also, we're also hoping that you'll come back because of the life that you've lived. And I know we didn't talk as much about how you got to this legacy um, and, and what the path you took was. I had but to die in order to come to you life. You had to die in order to come to life. <laughs> Folks, if you watched last week's episode and heard us talk about the avatar, you'll hear, you'll really talk about some of the, mm -hmm. hear us talk about some of the symbolism. Matter um, of fact, the, the story of Asar it's actually the story of human development. That's what it's about. It's mm -hmm. about human development, teaching you that if you ever get destroyed into many different aspects of your life, like asthma, diabetes, cut, that cuts you up and separates you and fragments you mm -hmm. into bad health, how you start putting yourself back together is through the nurturing process. Mm. Nurturing yourself, doing your bats, looking in the mirror, making commitments to yourself. Mm -hmm. You understand? And he's, he's talking about nurturing because the, the great principal, his wife, who was a symbol of nurturing, was the one that worked yes. with her son to reclaim um, the pieces of Asar. Sister, I'm going to ask you to come no, forward. That's good. For that's good. <laughs> You're going to get yours first? Okay. And if you could share that with the audience. 
save some for us. <laughs> <laughs> With that, I, I'd like to say um, thank you for tuning in for Comedic Legacy today. Um, as you know, Comedic Legacy today is the weekly journal of um, ancient Comedic, ancient African oh, history and spirituality. Yeah, no, and good. certainly, in order for us to be prepared to do the things we need to do to reclaim our righteousness, we have to be prepared with the things that we eat. Mm -hmm. We have to be prepared with sure. preparing ourselves for the nutrients that we need to go on this great journey, this great battle. And so with that, I want to say that um, once again, we'll say that the divine force in us greets the divine force in you. And that has been, once again, mm -hmm. Comedic Legacy today. And if I could just offer one affirmation to the audience, now that you've eaten divine foods, it's time to have some divine words. So I offer to you this uh, affirmation in the ancient language, the Meruneta. Rupu nuku amiku kemam keperu en unter hayu. I am that I am, a shining being, dwelling in the light of the Most High. Twau, thank you so much for being with us, audience. We're so happy that you are here. I'm glad you enjoyed your meal. I know our studio staff are waiting for their meal. <laughs> but again, thank you for being with us at Comedic Legacy today. And once again, folks, remember, this is a weekly series. And so for those of you who are living in the areas where Comedic Legacy is, is airing, you can certainly look forward to seeing that. Check with your local service provider. Um, definitely, since we're filming in Manhattan, you'll be able to see it every day, every um, Saturday in Manhattan at high noon, as our director likes to call it, um, at 12 noon. Um, and for those of you who are not in Manhattan, you're probably looking at this online. Um, you can watch it online at MNN.org, and you'll also be able to go to our website to be able to uh, stream this as well. Yes. So with that, we want to say Twa'u. Twa'u. Twa'u Inter. And thank you very much. <laughs> it's my joy. And thank you to Baba Power. It's my joy. <laughs>